So before doing this transmission change today, I just wanted to show you the error case that comes up. And this is the why I'm this is the reason why I'm changing the gearbox because of the error PA768 uh, shift solenoid D. Can ignore the other two errors there because I was mucking around with fuses and relays yesterday. So I've tripped up another couple of errors there. The one that's for the transmission is the one that worries me. I get told a few different things, like I might have a wire connection problem, I might have a sensor problem, I might have an ECU problem, and I'm thinking, you know what, it's 22 years, I'm going to change this transmission. So I scored another transmission with low kilometres on it, and uh, I'm going to do a swap today. So I'm only going to be recording main things today, I'm not going to be recording every single minute I'm doing this, because recording video and doing this just take too long. So first of all, I'm going to re remove the cowling system. I need to remove the duct here, two 10mm bolts on either side, undo the power connections here, and then I can pull that cowling system out. Now the reason why I removed the cowling system, because I've got a friend here that's going to help me, he's going to turn the engine by the crank for me when I'm underneath so I can line up these torque converter bolts, and I can undo them from underneath without having to uh, if I was by myself, I'd use the starter motor to crank it slowly, slowly, but uh, it's easier if you've got somebody else there turning the crank for you, so you can just line up the bolts underneath. Very important thing to remember, take it, take off any rings, because they're a death trap. If you get stuck between something and you can't get your hand out because of the ring, yeah, you, can't, you could lose a finger, so make sure you take any rings off. Alright, so there's no particular order of removing things, just however you feel comfortable. So I've got the power connections here that needs to be removed. Um, the exhaust needs to be unbolted. The transmission lines I'm going to do as a last point when the gearbox drops a little bit. The gear linkage. Uh, you probably want to mark that so you can put it in the same spot. Otherwise, you just have to line it up later when you're finished. Push it in the park. Uh, push it in park manually here and then make sure it's in park up top there. Uh, tighten it up and then go into neutral and if it still lines up you're good if it's a little bit out then you know you just have to adjust this a little bit one way or the other easy stuff tail shaft need to undo the tail shaft you can do that you can do it now or you can do it later it's really up to you uh, once you've got everything else undone uh, I'm going to drain the pan now I uh, get all that out, but there's always something left in the transmission, so when she tilts back later, she's going to drip a little bit. I'm just going to have a little catch pan underneath. I get, then we'll get to that uh, torque converter, get that unbolted, and get to the point where we're going to drop the box. And safety is number one. It's no joke. I had a car fall on me once before. I was lucky to get out and only squashed my thumb. If you want to hear that story, I'll tease you about it another time. Just let me know. I've got the car and ramps at the front there, and she's strapped off, so that's not going anywhere. And at the back, I've got stands on the back, and I'm leaving the big jack underneath the diff, just as an extra safety precaution, because safety is the main factor. Don't muck around with safety. Don't go under a car if you're just on bricks or something. Alright, tail shaft is off. There's the 18 mil on the back and 15 mil on the front. No fluid came out of here. Now I'm going to drop the pan and get that fluid out. I'm going to get the exhaust out of the way now, so removing this O2 sensor, that's a 22mm. And uh, because I've got extractors in a new system, it's a little bit in the way there. Let's try to show you that, but not too much. So I'll get this, I've already taken the rubber mount off here. And I'll under the exhaust here and then tie it up out of the way, probably to this old mount here, just to move it out of the way, but not let it rest on the ground. All right, just trying to show you this here, getting access to that top bolt on the starter motor. I don't know if you can see it from up here, maybe, no, you can't. I've got an extension on there. Coming around the back here, and I can feel my hand on the front there where the bolt is. So I've got the extension on, it's on the bolt right now. 
I just need to get a ratchet to turn that off. Okay. Should be enough room there for the ratchet. I think I just found my water problem. Looks like I've been leaking water there. From that Welsh plug. Okay. So, I'm going to get that first bolt undone. Now on the automatic it's a pain in the ass because you've got the transmission lines and you've got the water lines and everything, the hot water lines and everything. It's kind of messing things up here. On the manual, the lines are completely different. It's a lot easier to access there. So, I'll get a ratchet onto that now. Undo that bolt there and then get to this bolt at the bottom here. And I'm just going to sit that backwards. I'm not going to undo the wires because the battery is disconnected. Uh, and it doesn't need to be, the wires don't need to come off this. It's, once it's loose, it's off the gearbox and we don't have to worry. Okay, so starter rate is hanging there now. That was a lot easier than I expected. It just looks like a big mess, but uh, maybe two minutes work. So I've undone the cross member that the gearbox come down. And you can see the two top bolts I need to get to now. Undo them two first, and then I'll jack the gearbox back up so I can do the side bolts. So you need a long ass extension to get in there. It's 19 mil. I thought they were 18 mil, but they're 19 mil up top there. So get those two off, and then uh, I'm not ready to take the gearbox off yet. I have to get to that torque converter. Okay, so now we're going to do this torque converter, and you got this little sight hole here that you can get to the bolts. That's covered by this little plastic cover here. And I liked it the old days with the XAs that you had the complete cover that you could take off and you could do two bolts at a time. So, I'll just get my mate to turn the engine for me. And almost, a little bit more, that'll do it. Uh, transmission lines are now undone. 19 on the bottom, 17 on the top. Surprise! Okay, that's one transmission out. two transmissions next to each other the one I'm putting in the one that just came out and uh, so what I've got to do now is change the seals on that swap over the cross member put the linkage on I'll give a few things a clean to parts that I swap over uh, it's a good idea to keep these type of things it can uh, tell the car to be changing into second gear or something if there's corrosion inside uh, now that I've taken the gearbox out, I see that I had a front main seal leak and I might be changing a gearbox simply because I was losing transmission fluid. Problem with today's transmissions is there's no dipstick to be able to check that sort of thing. So it's probably why it's a good idea to do a fluid change yearly. Uh, if you've got no leaks, you shouldn't have to, but you know, it's just to make sure that you're not low on transmission fluid, it's probably a good idea. In saying that though, Never really saw any leaks around the area. There was one time a leak on my driveway, 
and I thought that was from a different car. I couldn't work out where it was coming from. I'd put cardboard and everything under my car. Nothing happened overnight, so I was like, okay, not me. But must have been because I see that the front main seal's leaking. Anyway, I'll get into it. I'll swap over what I need to swap over. I've had a delay today because this on mine was um, so tight that it threaded. And thankfully, I was able to use vice grips to clamp onto it and turn it. Otherwise, I was going to cut pipes. So there's a probably about a two-hour delay there on getting that one pipe off. It was just incredible. Just didn't want to turn. But we won in the end. Anyway, I'm going to get over to changing things and get ready to put it back in. Just showing you here the torque converter. You want to make sure that the bolt lines up here and there as well. So when I put this on, they're close to each other. They might might be slightly off, but you know, just turning the engine over a little bit here or there just to line it up is what you want there. And uh, she's on the jack there, and I'm going to be putting it up very soon. Uh, there's also a couple of pins that I need to line up as the jack goes up. Let's see if I can show you from this angle here. So you got that pin there. Once you put the transmission in place, these have to line up and the transmission slides all the way on by itself. Do not use the bolts to tighten in the transmission to bring it up tight. You can use the bolts as guides. Once it gets to a certain point, just tighten them in a little bit. Use them as guides. Do not use the bolts to pull the gearbox in. Because if that torque converter is not in properly and you use the bolts to tighten it right in, you can bust the fluid pump and then you'll be up for another transmission. So there's one on that side and there's one on that side. Okay, I'm going to start getting this in now. Okay, so the transmission's in. We're going for a cruise, just our 80k section at the moment. Everything feels really nice. Everything feels like it should, like it should, like it did before. I just um, should have checked the transmission fluid level before. That's probably all it was. But anyway, that's life. You got the TFT reading there that shows you the temperature of the transmission fluid. I only put a few sensor readings there. I just wanted to mainly monitor the transmission since I changed it. Everything's doing really well. The parts of the install that you didn't see. And I have a different video on it. I did a um, filter change and fluid top up using a pump. Um, I didn't do it through the front like I did last time because on this transmission I can actually undo the fill plug that's on the transmission on this one. So that was uh, a plus there. All up, eight, eight, eight litres went in. And uh, it needed a little bit more, but I didn't have a little bit more. I only bought eight litres. And, uh, but the car is driving quite fine. I'll recheck it get next month just to check the fluid level. And uh, in six months, I'll give it another complete fluid change just to any old fluid that's mixed with the new fluid right now. I'll get out and put some new stuff in. If you're wondering what app I'm using for the scan tool, it's just, uh, it's called Forescan. You'll find that in the Google apps. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you coming here to watch my clip and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.